Numbers are rolling. I have OBS keyed up here. Good morning. This video is not intended for the saints, for the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And they are the saints, saved people, are the ones who will probably watch this the most, and also my enemies, but this video is more intended for any of you who have been deceived by these Christians, especially these hateful Christians such as Stephen Anderson, Sodomite Stephen Anderson. I'm not even a minute in. That uh, that might get some of you um, Anderson cult followers there a little riled up. If you happen to have an authorized version of the scriptures, I would invite you to go ahead and grab it and Go ahead and read along with me, word for word and verse by verse of what the, we're going to be reading today. Okay, this isn't going to be that big of a detailed video. There are going to be a lot of links for you in the description box where we get into a uh, very deep detail on a lot of the stuff that we're going to be addressing today. But um, if you've got a copy of the scriptures, please get it and follow along with me. Okay? If you don't, I will do my best to not make a grammatical error or anything like that, okay? But we're going to be talking about this individual by the name of Stephen Anderson. Now, I'm not going to get off on so much stuff about this individual because the groundwork has already been laid on this guy, okay? The guy from the Northeast, you know, the guy from Maine, he, he, he did like over 300 videos or something about this guy. Other people have explained. Stephen Anderson is not a saved man. Stephen Anderson is a Jesuit coadjutor. Is he an actual Jesuit himself? I don't think so. Is he, like many, working for the Vatican? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Now, those of you <laughs> King James Bible-believing Christians, incidentally, incidentally, I have heard from him saying himself, he <laughs> identifies as a King James Bible believing Christian. He has uttered those words. So did Jesuit James White, but he doesn't, he, he hates the authorized version. But he has said that he's a Bible believer. Jesuit James White. Okay? He's a. Stephen Anderson has identified himself as a King James Bible believer. Yeah. Yeah. And King James Bible believing Christianity will be dealt with in another video, Lord willing. That you guys, you guys, in your specific members only club click that you have created for yourselves, you guys are really, just really getting on my nerves. But, anyway. Some things you need to know about Stephen Anderson. Number one, he is a staunch defender of the one God of three persons, the Trinity. Staunch, vile defender of the Trinity. Okay, he is not an ignorant man on this. He you know he, he he's not ignorant. Um, he's willfully ignorant. He's stupid, but he's not unintelligent okay he's a trinitarian uh and someone at the level of stephen anderson um teaching about the trinity the way he does that that man's a deceiver he's lost he's going to hell and guiding many other people to hell number two stephen anderson is also staunch anti-dispensationalism rightly dividing the word of truth See, uh, this one say, and for this is not made for the Church of the Living God. Uh, the way a man is made right, mankind is made right within the periods of Scripture uh, called dispensations or ages. Okay, uh, changes. You are not made right with God the same way that they were made right with God during the Garden of Eden. 
Okay, A fool who says in his heart there is no God, that's what a fool is, can even decipher that. Atheists can figure that one out. Muslims can figure that one out. Okay, Mr. Anderson, similar to the easy believist idiots, um, say that salvation has never changed. It's always been by grace through faith from beginning to end. That is what Mr. Anderson uh, teaches and believes and preaches. Okay, He did one of his movies where he... Um, where he went ahead and he said that uh, uh, he did a video against well, but who is it? Uh, C.I. Schofield, who I don't agree with that all, pretty much at all. But uh, he did this one movie trying to show that dispensationalism is satanic. Okay, he's anti-dispensational. Again, he knows the truth, but he's teaching contrary to it anti-dispensationalism he says that all of this is written to you personally that all doctrine is applicable that it's all meshed together that is not the truth that is not the truth the way you are made right with god today is not the way you were made right with god under the law this is called dispensationalism this is not intended for the church of the living god if you have questions, they will, uh, things will be there for you in the description box, okay? Stephen Anderson is against that. That's, that's bad, okay? You people who, are, who will watch this, hopefully, um, who are sodomites, um, he, Stephen Anderson preaches a three-person God, okay? Uh, that's bad, okay? He's also anti-dispensational. Anti-dispensational. That, that's also bad, okay? Stephen Anderson is what is no, uh, unfortunately referred to as a post-tribulation individual. He preaches and teaches that Christians are going to be going through what he erroneously refers to as the Great Tribulation. Okay? That the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He is also rabidly anti-redemption of the purchased possession which is also erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? He's vehemently against that. He teaches, as does Rome, as does Rome, that Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. The seven-year period is for Israel, Jacob, the time of Jacob's trouble. It is not for the church, okay? The body of Christ, the saints, get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Mr. Anderson preaches totally against that, okay? That, that bad. Okay, that's very bad. Here's an interesting thing also. Number four, Mr. Stephen Anderson preaches and teaches Easy believism. Just believe and receive. And you're going to see in some of these videos, and I've got to warn you. I have to warn you. What, I'm, what are we at? Uh, eight minutes. I've got to warn you people. You're going to be subjected to this guy. Okay? I apologize in advance. Okay? I believe, by the way, in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? And I am a saint. Okay? A saint is a saved individual. All right? I am not... A King James Bible believing Christian. I want nothing to do with that tripe. Okay, that's nonsense. Look at what it is nowadays. We'll talk about that later. Okay, don't confuse me with them. I'm not. Okay, you guys can uh, play around your little vomit and call your, you know, get your bro hug stuff going on in your adolescent little high school click garbage that you idiots involve yourselves in. You go ahead and do that. Okay, while the grown up saints will meditate on the scriptures while you guys go and follow a man and whatever, okay? I am not like them. I am not one of them, okay? Stephen Anderson believes that it's just believe and receive. Easy believism. Repentance is a work, okay? Calling on the name of the Lord is a work, okay? These are the tenets of easy believism, okay? Just believe and receive, all right? That, that's heresy. That's heresy, okay? We've talked about that. There are plenty of videos on this channel that the Lord has given me where we refute that. There's even a, a playlist for, uh, for you refuting free grace. It's disgusting, okay? Number five. Number five. 
Stephen Anderson is anti-Shemitic. Don't you mean anti-Semitic? No, I mean anti-Shemitic. Shem. Okay. Why they dropped the H, I don't know. Stephen Anderson is anti-Shemitic. He wants the Jews to go to hell and whatnot. And Stephen Anderson, very, very big warning here. He's also a Holocaust denier. He, I believe he actually is like, well, there were probably only 250,000 Jews killed. As adverse to the 6 million, which I personally believe was a lot more than 6 million. He, uh, he hates the Jews. He's replacement theology. Okay? Stephen Anderson is replacement theology. You don't have to believe me. There is much evidence out there to back up every one of these accusations and to show that Stephen Anderson is a Jesuit coadjutor. Okay? He, he's a Trinitarian. He's anti-dispensational. He's post-trib, easy believism, anti-Jewish. Okay? Five. The number of death. All those five tenets are symbolic of Rome! Okay? Rome. Stephen Anderson upholds the doctrines of his mother church, Rome. And you know what, Mr. Anderson? I hope you're looking at me. You're a sodomite yourself. Because your hatred that you have is projection, boy. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? See, unlike you, I was a sodomite. I was, as I'm not going to use that word, the F word as a reference, but I was one of them. I was a, as you have said yourself, a homo. But you know what happened? The Lord saved me and rescued me out of and see, Mr. Anderson, in his venomous hatred against these people, um, teaches a form of Calvinism, of elect and non-elect. Uh, it's called the reprobate doctrine, but we will get into that later. This man, Stephen Anderson, is a vile, wretched, Jesuit coadjutor devil. And he's a sensationalist. Okay, um, he doesn't have a YouTube channel anymore, but you can find his stuff online. And like some other of these King James Bible-believing cults out there, um, his disciples are... Oh. You know, some of you guys who uh, follow, you know, some of you Gene Kim guys and some of you guys <laughs> from, with the guy from Maine, some of you guys are pretty crazy. Okay, some of you guys, you know, are pretty <laughs> out there. The Andersonites, they're, they're touched. They're, they're dangerous. You guys are dangerous. You really are. You really are. Because uh, if anyone would go into a building uh, with a shotgun, it would probably, and uh, yeah, it would probably be these Andersonites. Okay? But, Matthew chapter 7. Verses 15 on to verse 19. Okay? Beware of false prophets, like Stephen Anderson, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And this one kind of puzzles me because the, you know, the, the fury that comes out from that man. Um, you know, some of you, it's like, oh, Brad, you get yelling. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, but nothing in comparison to Stephen Anderson. Nothing like that. Oh, goodness gracious. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, uh, what are we reading to? Verse 19. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. And there is none good but God, not yourself, okay? But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. By their fruits ye shall know them. Alright? 
Talk about bashing individuals, being uh, uh, showing them hate, violence. Okay, the followers of Stephen Anderson. Acts chapter twenty. Acts chapter twenty, verses twenty-eight. Now and saints save people. They, they, these, these are very familiar verses. Okay, like I said, this video is not intended for the saints. This is intended for you lost people. Acts chapter twenty. Verses 28 on to verse 30. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Now, when it comes in context to this double Stephen Anderson, people have brought up the argument about verse 30. Well, it's like, he's actually one of us. He's just messed up. No, 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 no. Stephen Anderson is not a saved man. He does not represent the actual Jesus Christ of the scriptures. Okay? And any of you sodomite people who have been subjected to this man and have the wrong idea about who we, the saints, are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? That man does not represent Jesus Christ. Nor does King James Bible believe in Christianity. There, I said it. You guys wanted your own little uh, members-only club. Now you got it. And look at y'all. Look at y'all. Like I said, I, I got me a temper too. <laughs> Nothing like Mr. Stephen Anderson, though. Okay? He does not represent the true God of the Scriptures. Okay? He was never of us. He has ingratiated himself into what is Christian. And you got to remember, lost people, what's Christian? Someone who follows Christ. Which one? The Christ of the Bible. Tell me what you know about him. Tell me what you uh, what, what tell me what you know about the Christ of the Bible of Christianity. He, you know, you know who you know who you guys describe all the time. Not all the time, but most of the time, because you give you run into Pentecostals who at least got the thing about one God, not three that make one. But you know who usually you guys end up describing is the Christ of Rome. Christ of Rome who has no requirements. Who loves you, but yet he's going to send you to hell. Right? And see, that opens up a whole, whole wide door to, um, to witness on to you lost people. Okay? Stephen Anderson wormed his way in. Infiltrator. Okay? takes upon himself the name that has already been defiled by all that is out there which is called Christianity. Okay? Stephen Anderson was never a saved man. Stephen Anderson was never a saint. Okay? He's a Christian. Yes, he is. Stephen Anderson is a Christian. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But you know what he is not? He is not a saint. He is not a saint of the church. And, and, and those of you watching this might be, dude, saints are you. Saint. What is a saint? Okay, brother and I uh, went through the scriptures to show, to prove to you, a saint is not what Rome tells you it is. A saint is someone who is right with God and or saved. Saved individual is a saint. Okay? Saved people are saints. But there's a whole lot of Christians out there, and they ain't saints. Stephen Anderson is one of them. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us. They were false brethren brought in unawares. They came in unawares to people. But after a while, when they start, bah, 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 you shall know them by their fruits. Okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. Three, teaches three gods, anti-rightly dividing the word of truth, <laughs> post-tribulation, 
easy believism, hates the Jews, okay, and there's a, there's a whole lot more. Uh, uh, you know, there's a whole lot more that could be added to that. Five is the number of death. That's good enough. <coughs> but he's a King James Bible believing Christian too. Yeah, he is. Yeah. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Right. <laughs> right. Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson. He came, he got himself in, like infiltrators do. Look, play around for a while, but then, then, like they always do, they, boom, shoot themselves in the foot. Okay? All right? Stephen Anderson was never a saved man. Never once. He does not represent the true God of the Scriptures. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, Second Peter chapter two, verses seventeen on to verse nineteen. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Uh, the rah 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 mentality that you see in the disciples of these King James Bible believing Christians, this um, it's 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 adolescent. It's it it belongs on a high school uh, playground, uh, if if you will, um, and they lure through the flesh, itching your ears, telling you things you want to hear, okay, justifying heresy in order to placate flesh. Okay? Stephen Anderson is a sensationalist. He, he's in the limelight. The, uh, any publicity is good publicity. Okay? That, that's his uh, modus operandi. That's the modus operandi of a lot of these guys. Okay? Verse 19. While they promised them liberty, their adherents, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. And Jude. Jude verses 12 and 13. Jude does not have chapters. Jude is one book in and of itself. Jude 12 and 13. Uh, for those of you who do not know, that is right before the book of Revelation. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Charity is self-sacrifice, not liberty. Liberty is not charity. There are aspects within one of the other, but they themselves are two separate things. <laughs> anyway. Uh, these are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Skipping down to verses 16 on to verse 19. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. The late Peter Ruckman, towards the end of his life and towards the end of his ministry, that, that guy was, he was into it. He was into his own mystique. That's something that the longer you walk with the Lord, and if you're used in any capacity where other people know who you are, that's something you have to be aware of and guard against. It seems that for a lot of people, the longer they get in a capacity like this, the harder it is for them to remember that they're mere dirt. We have a lot of examples of that. Mr. Breaker, Mr. Kim, the individual from Maine, Mr. Ruckman, okay, Mr. Lawson, these people who, go, who have do, been doing this for years and years and years and years, can, it's easier for them 
to get into that place where they can get taken by their, captivated by their own mystique. Okay? All right? You really got to watch out for that. I really got to watch out for that. Okay? But beloved, remember yet the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that he told you there should be mockers, and that's what Stephen Anderson is, mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves. I follow Robert Breaker. I follow Gene Kemp. I follow Brian Denlinger. I am a Ruckman. Are you not, Colonel? All of y'all. All of y'all. All of y'all. Are you not, Colonel? I've seen your comments. What about me? That's, that's amusing. But I see how you guys act in your little click thing. You're, you're, you're just a bunch of carnal people. You're just a bunch of carnal people putting another man on a pedestal. Whether it's Breaker, whether it's Kim, okay? Whether it's the guy from Maine, whether it's Rockman, okay? Whether it's Lawson, whether it's Steven Anderson, whether it's uh, David Daniels, okay? They separate themselves. Sensual. Led by their senses. Look at the comment sections of some of the names that I've mentioned. Look at their comment section. Look at their comment sections. Look at them. Look at them. Hey, 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 you're free to do as you will. Amen. All things are lawful for you. But look at them. These are people who are claiming to be representatives of the Christ of the Scriptures. Look at y'all. This is why I rarely comment on any video. Rarely. Not even on Brethren's video. I, I rarely. I watch them, but I, I rarely comment. Um, if I'm asked to or something like comes up in a video, especially with a brother, uh, you know, to, uh, to be like, it's like, hey, or give a verse of, and see, that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, in the comment section and whatnot. You post scripture. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Most of the, in the comment sections of these people, of the names I've mentioned, it's all sensual. Having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Now, we are going to look at two of these videos. Um, I cannot, I don't know if we're going to look at them in their entirety. I am not going to link these videos in the description box for you. Okay. Uh, if you want to see this for yourself, Steven Anderson gay. Put that in your search. These videos will come up. Okay. But we're going to look at these videos here. Okay. Okay. Come on, center. All right. I warn you ahead of time. What you are going to hear is, going, is grotesque, vile, and disgusting. And contrary to the scripture. Okay? This one is from USA Today from nine years ago. And I can assure you that this Stephen Anderson guy has just gotten worse and worse. All right? But here we go. I beg your pardon. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! Those hateful words are from the mouth of a Tempe pastor preaching that God's word says that killing gay people is the only way to get rid of AIDS by Christmas. He says all gays are pedophiles. And that is true. Stephen Anderson did say that. And remember, Stephen Anderson is a sensationalist, not reference onto the political party. Sensationalism. Okay, when I say that, it's like it's about the entertainment. It's like the ooh, the ah. Okay, that's what I'm referring to when I say sensationalism. I'm not talking about no political party, okay? Pedophiles. He says the biggest hypocrite in the world is the person who believes in the death penalty for murderers, but not for homosexuals. Um, 
not all sodomites are pedophiles. Here's the interesting thing. Um, with what is being broadcasted to you people of the effeminate nature of some of these sodomite men to make them look like as if they are women and younger is in, okay, the pedophile angle is projected, but hardly are sodomites, all sodomites, pedophiles. Okay, that, that is not the truth, okay? Pastor Steven Anderson has agreed to join us tonight for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. Pastor Anderson, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me on. Have you always hated gay people? Is it something your father taught you, or is it something that you came to on your own? No, I haven't always. You know, I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't... You grew up in a Christian home! <laughs> you Christian! <laughs> why, some of you, why do you people want to hold on to that... To that? Um, stigmata, that stigma. <laughs> Why? Uh, anyway. It wasn't until I read the Bible cover to cover at age 17 that I discovered the truth of what the Bible really says because a lot of passages don't ever get preached from the pulpit because they're simply not popular. I have to be honest, when, when I heard your sermon, it sounded like the rantings of someone who was either a hate monger or a religious zealot, and I'm wondering which are you? Zealots, like the uh, Jesuitical Roman Catholic zealots. Listen to his answer. Well, I'm a religious zealot, and, you know, I love the Bible. I love God's Word. I believe that the law of the Lord is perfect. And, you know, Leviticus 20.13 clearly says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. And, you know, as a Christian, I believe the Bible, and that's where I get my belief. Scripture does say that. Now, there, there will be links for you if you're a sodomite watching this. That is true. That is true. Okay, yes. Is that the way it is today? Are we to kill sodomites? No. Mr. Anderson here will, in this very thing, go on to suggest to you that you are beyond salvation that you are elected to go to hell because of your sin. That, dear friend, is called Calvinism. Okay? Yes, the scripture plainly does say that in Leviticus 20, verse 13. Let me, let me demonstrate this to you, okay? Let me demonstrate this to you. Alright? Yes, this is. This, yes, this is. Okay? Leviticus 20, verse 13. Leviticus 20, verse 13. I beg your pardon. This uh, set of scriptures have not been... Okay. <clears throat> if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with woman, lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Unmistakable. Unmistakable. And I have encountered a female sodomite who once said to me, it says mankind, it doesn't say anything about woman with woman. Uh, we, we, we will address that a little later in this video, okay? But yes, it clearly says that. But see, what Mr. Anderson is telling you people, and unfortunately, I have encountered some of you sodomites who, have, who well, according to your God, because I'm like this, I can't be saved. Who told you that? Where'd you hear that from? Westboro Baptist Church? Stephen Anderson? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Uh, we are going to be primarily in the New Testament, but I, I want to read, share this with you in Hosea. In Hosea chapter 6. Today is the 6th, by the way. Hosea chapter 6. Okay? God delights in mercy. Okay? Mr. Anderson is going to tell you that you can't repent of this sin of yours, that you can't, like, turn away from yourself, your indulgence of self, and turn on to the Lord. You can't give up your sins to get saved. It doesn't work that way. What you are turning from is yourself. 
your self-righteousness. Okay, that's what you're repenting of, yourself. And sodomy is just an indulgence of self. Okay? But see, God delights in mercy. And this is in the Old Testament, by the way, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Hosea chapter 6. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Yeah, there is none good but God. Yeah, yeah. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as, as the light that goes forth. For I desired mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant, and have dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity, and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the whoredom of, of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he has set an harvest for thee, when I return the captivity of my people. Now this was said in a dispensation where it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? But what we are to take away from this is verse 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. God delighteth in mercy. God would much rather be merciful. God is a God of judgment. His judgments are perfect. Amen. But this idea that Mr. Anderson adheres to and if you've been warped by teaching like this, I'm sorry. You've been lied to. You've been lied to. He is going to infer to you that you have been given over by God, that you are elected to go to hell, and there is nothing that can be done for you. That's not true. That's a lie. That's a lie. And see, Mr. Anderson is projecting from his own self-abhorrence. Stephen Anderson! You're a sodomite. You haven't repented of it. Okay? You've never been forgiven. You're not saved. That's why that is constantly clinging to you. You're not a saved man, Stephen Anderson. And hey, every single one of you Andersonites, Stephen Anderson is gay not happy, as you guys like to use the term. He is a homosexual. He is a closeted sodomite. How do you know that, Brad? Well, number one, I told you I used to be one myself. And number two, the kind of projection he does, come on, it's obvious. One of the first times I heard this man, I knew right away. It's like, this guy, he's a sodomite. And then to go on to hear it's like what he says about, whoa, <laughs> okay. But let, let's continue with this little sodomite devil, Stephen Anderson. Uh, sodomite Steve Anderson. Doesn't the Ten Commandment, isn't the first commandment, thou shalt not kill? No, the first commandment is thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, but it, um, it, of course, is, is thou shalt not kill a, one of the commandments? Yes, it is. But what you have to understand is that the Bible commands that certain people be put to death. Not by me, not by Christians. It's obviously not my job or the job of any... Then why aren't we putting people to death uh, for breaking the commandments today, Mr. Anderson? He doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Okay? We are to love our enemies by telling them the truth. That's how you love your enemies. You don't love your enemy while they're running off of a cliff 
cheering them on, saying God loves you, so they go headlong. No, you love them, but it's like, hey, stop running towards the edge of the cliff. You're going to go headlong and die. That's love. Hate is, hey, keep going. Keep going. He's going off of a cliff. Keep going. God loves you. God's not any. That's hatred. That's, that's hatred. Okay? All right? Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. He will repay. It is not our duty today in this dispensation to be going about and killing these people. That, that, that doesn't work that way. Okay? It doesn't work that way. All right? All right? You can may bring up there, well, it used to be, okay? What used to be isn't what is today, is it? As pertaining to salvation. Okay? All right? If you're a sodomite, the Lord can save you. But unlike what Calvinists teach, like Stephen Anderson or some idiot uh, named Scott teaches, um, you have the free will. You have to make the right choices. Okay? And what Stephen Anderson is telling you, is going to tell you, is that you've been given over. Hear from the horses we were in here. Any Christian to go out and kill anybody, and I've never taught anything like that. But rather that the government's job is to punish criminals and to execute those who've committed capital crimes. And according to the Bible, homosexuality is a capital crime, and I didn't write the Bible. What if irony of ironies, it turned out that you had a gay son or a gay daughter, would you want them dead as a way to cure AIDS? Well, that's just a fallacy that it just turns out that certain people are gay. That's just a lie. Because now, check out this verbal, verbal gymnastic that he does. Okay? You were not born homosexual. You were not. That's a lie. He touched it. He just touched on that. No one is born sodomite homosexual. No. You have free will. You have the ability to choose. God doesn't force you to be sodomite or straight or whatever. Okay? Those are choices you make. You have to make the right choice. You are not a robot. What he says is true. But now, now, pay attention to how he says this, okay? He just, he just gave credence. It's like, no one's born homosexual. He's right. But now watch what he does. Watch what he does. Because it's not random. It's, it's not something that's just going to accidentally happen to one of my how, children. Wait, how do you think it happens then? Well, the Bible's real clear how it happens in Romans chapter 1. It talks about how God gives people over to a reprobate mind to do these filthy acts. So it, it has to do with them rejecting the Lord and rejecting Jesus Christ. And, 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 you know, and I'll ask again, Pastor. God gave, gave them over to a reprobate mind. And it comes from rejecting. Now, that's true. That is true. But see, what he's inferring is that once, okay, that there's no coming back. A person can go past the point of no return. Because you got to remember, God is not a God of coercion. God does not force you to make the right or the wrong decision. You choose, you choose to be a sodomite against what God says. God will be, okay, that's what you want. Go ahead. Go right ahead. I ain't going to stop you. Go ahead. In fact, I'll allow even more delusion to come your way because you have chosen contrary. But see, that does not mean that that individual can have a moment where he is broken of his self-righteousness and repents of himself and turn to the Lord and get saved. Because if it is as he... Did you see that, by the way? If it is the way he is saying, then God gives people over to hell. God elects people to go to hell and elects people to be saved. And what he is inferring is that if you're sodomite, you're one of these elect to go to hell and you can never be saved. Did you catch that? Then let's let's uh let's uh go back just uh just a hair. Just a hair. To a reprobate mind to do these filthy acts. Uh, so
Bible's real clear out happens in Romans chapter 1. It talks about how God gives people over to a reprobate mind to do these filthy acts. So it, it has to do with them rejecting the Lord and rejecting Jesus Christ. And, 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 and I'll ask again, Pastor, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but I want to understand that you're a man of your word. If you had a gay son or a gay daughter, what would you do? Well, it's not going to happen. If I did, I would have nothing to do with them. That's like saying, well, what if your daughter, you know, grew up to be an axe murderer? Okay, whatever. But did you catch that? Giving them over to a reprobate mind meaning that they can't come back from it, okay? That is veiled Calvinism, that they are elected to go to hell, okay? All right? God can forgive any sin. Never mind! In the description box, okay? Check this out. Um, well, uh, what is it? The unpardonable sin. Don't worry about that. You Never mind that. Okay, blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, the unpardonable sin, the, the, you don't have to worry about that today. The only time that applies is when Jesus Christ himself is physically on the earth. Jesus Christ himself, God the Father, is not physically on the earth today. His body is, we, the church of God, yes, but he himself physically is not on the earth. Okay? He will be on the earth during the kingdom of heaven, which is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? Yes, he will be. That's when you have to worry about the unpardonable sin. Okay? Today, Jesus Christ is not physically on the earth. Okay? There is not a sin that God cannot forgive. Okay? There isn't. There isn't. Actually, I know I said we're going to listen to this in its entirety, but I, you know what? Enough, enough, is, enough is enough of this, this filth. Okay? <laughs> All right. Now we're going to go see another one here, which um, actually we'll get to this one, and then we'll be done with that, and then we'll get back to... Okay. This one here. This one here. Stephen Anderson furthers the point that if someone is a sodomite, being given over to a reprobate mind, okay, that there is no hope for them at all, that they have been elected. He doesn't use that words, those words, but listen to what he says, okay? And like I say, you want to see these links? You want to see these for yourself? Steve Anderson Gay in your search there. That's it. Check this out. This fight has come to us, and you know what I say? Bring it on! Yeah. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. I'll, I'll put it this way. Any man who would have sex with a man would have sex with a man. Projection. Projection. <laughs> hey, Stevie boy. <laughs> You're projecting your own self into it. <laughs> You're condemning yourself. You're condemning yourself. This guy, he himself is a sodomite. Do I have a smoking gun to prove that? No. No, I don't. Would I say that to his face? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Then he could shoot me with his AK-47 and have his... Uh, his flock beat me up and send me home. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I would. I would say that to Stephen Anderson's face. I would. I'd call it, Stephen Anderson, you're a closeted sodomite. Stephen Anderson is a, is a closeted sodomite. And he's projecting the guilt and shame that he has not repented of because, and he is not forgiven of because he's not a saved man himself. Okay? He's not a saved man. Alright? I was a sodomite. But I'm forgiven of those sins. I'm saved. Okay? Forgetting those things that were behind, I press on forward. Okay? He can't get over it because he's not a saved man. Stephen Anderson is a closeted sodomite. He has a wife and kids, so what? That, come on. And even sodomites themselves will be like, well, that doesn't mean anything. 
and in this context of what we're talking about, it doesn't. Okay? Listen to this. That is true. About five or ten years ago, a lot of the stuff that I preached, people thought it was too radical. Now, to me, LGBT stands for let God burn them. Right. But now they're starting to see, oh wow, he's right. <clears throat> but you say, well, it's LGBTQ. Well, then you could say, let God burn them quickly. I think what makes our church special is just how the preaching is totally unfiltered. I don't have any advice for homosexuals except to put a bullet in your own head so that you don't molest my kids or anyone else's kids. Uns wow, huh? Wow. Wow. You heard, you heard that. I, I, here. I don't have any advice for homosexuals except to put a bullet in your own head so that you don't molest my kids or anyone else's kids. Uns Stephen Anderson says that you, if you're a sodomite, number one, that you've been given over, there's no hope for you, and the best thing you can do is kill yourself. That, that, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. That, that, that's enough. That's enough. You got the point. You got the point. You got the point. Please turn, please... If you can, go with me to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. God can forgive any sin today. Don't, don't, don't worry about the unpardonable sin. Don't, that, that doesn't apply for us today. It doesn't. Don't, don't trust me. Trust the scripture. Okay? So you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Before the, our Lord Jesus Christ died, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Okay? The law was still binding. After he died, the New Testament, which we are in this dispensation, began with the death of the testator. Okay? The death, burial, and resurrection. He died. That is what brought in the New Testament, this current dispensation that we are in today. Okay? Things are different. Today, now, the Lord can forgive your sin. It doesn't matter what it is. Oh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is something that you do not have to be concerned with today. Okay? And then, and these Pentecostals, they'll throw that if they, they talk to you in this satanic... Blah, 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 they say, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And they point to Acts chapter 2. Uh, hey, you Pentecostals, in Acts chapter 2, show me where anyone says... You've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Show me where Peter said, you blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Show me that. Why is the Lord Jesus the only one who talks about it? Hmm. Like I said, questions about that, it'll be in the description box. Okay? Forget about that. God can forgive anything. Can forgive anything. But see, he's not going to force it upon you. You have to make the right decision. And unless you're saved, you're going to go to hell. And see, when the Lord saves you, he hates sodomy. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He's not going to want you to remain in that capacity. He will be in you. Okay? The Lord will dwell in you permanently if you go to him on his terms. All right? He doesn't want you to be a sodomite. He will free you from that. He can free you from that, and he will. But you got to trust him. you got to believe on him. And he will pull you out of that. He did for me. Okay? But you got to remember, you have to make the right choices. He's not going to force it onto you. Acts chapter 13, verses 38 down to verse 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Lord Jesus Christ, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all 
that believe are justified from all things. Not justified to do them, meaning what? Forgiven all things. From which he could not just be justified by the law of Moses, made right. Justified, made right. Okay? All things. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 26. Now, context for this, Romans chapter 3, verse... Let's read for Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 26. Pay attention. Here is your, here is your condition, lost individual. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. No one is good. No one is good. Me, you. Okay? <clears throat> there is none... Okay, uh, wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. I just left my point in place. Okay? Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues have they used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Lost person, whoever you are, atheist, sodomite, lesbian, whatever you are, okay? You are going to be judged by this very standard, okay? At the great white throne of judgment, all right? If you don't, if the Lord don't save you, you're going to, your final judgment will be at the great white throne. And you are going to be judged by this standard, the authorized version. Okay? Alright? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Most sodomites, when you make them aware, they know that what they're doing is wrong. But, evil is good and good is evil. And they can justify anything. But it is by the law, the law that is contained in Scripture, that you realize and know what is evil and what is good, because God's ways are perfect. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now these guys who come to you and say, just believe and receive. Uh, which is nonsense, and most lost people can figure that out. Um, they come to this portion of Scripture all the while vehemently avoiding what we already read in Romans, 10, uh, Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. Why? Because Romans 10 on to verse 18 is God putting his finger on that one thing that you lack. That is personal accountability. That is the Lord addressing you personally. They like to avoid that and hide that well, we're all this. And that is true. But see, they avoid accountability by saying, well, we're all this way. And with these sleazy believists, <coughs> after a while, without, with very little effort, you can just, uh, scratch them and out comes, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. There you go. There you go. Okay? Let's continue. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And what are we writing to? Reading to right there. 
Now, in that context, where is the clause that says that the sin of sodomy would not be forgiven? Hmm? Where is it? It's not there. Because any sin, any sin today can be forgiven. And Mr. Anderson there wants you to believe contrary to that. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 on to verse 11. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, and who is good? God, okay? For a good man some would dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. Us in this context is reference unto we saints Church of the Living God, the body of Christ. Okay? And this does not lend itself to Calvinistic elect and non elect. That's heresy. Link in the description box about that. Okay? Okay? Don't watch out for heresy. Uh, watch out for Calvinism, which is heresy. Okay? Much more than. Uh, let's read verse 8 again. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for, the un died for us. Excuse me. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, except for sodomy. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 23. Earlier we read in Peter about what you're given over to, okay? Make the choice. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, servant, not a slave. You have a free will. You have a choice, Okay? God doesn't hold a gun to your head forcing you to do this, that, or the other. You have to make the right choice. And he's not going to make that choice for you. He's not. He will show you what he wants of you, what he expects of you in this dispensation. Absolutely. He's not going to choose for you. Because if, you, if he does that, then you are a robot. Okay? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? You have a choice. But God be thanks and thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Servants have a choice. Slaves don't. Okay? But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your, your for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. See, you can't escape. God can forgive you and save you. He can take you out of sodomy. Do you want to? Because hmm? he's not going to force it upon you. And if you choose contrary to him and to what he wants, it's like, hey, God's a giving God. You want, it, you want the lie? He'll give it to you. It's like, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, and you know, it's like he'll allow, it's like, hey, go ahead and believe all this other nonsense. It's not that he can't rescue you. Okay? Because see, what Stephen Anderson was telling you is that you are beyond salvation. There, okay, there is a time, a point in a man's life or a woman's life where they will go past the point of no return. 
Not because the Lord can't save them, but because they have gone so far that they won't turn back. Not that they can't, but they won't. But they are so far gone. Their hearts are so hardened. Okay, let's continue. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit on the holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verses 9. On to verse 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich up unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever you don't give up your sin and then the Lord saves you. No. You give up sin because the Lord saves you. That doesn't mean that you don't that you are sinless. Not at all, because we sin every day. I sin every day. Oh, okay. So did Paul. So did Peter. Okay? That's not what that means. You couldn't give up your sin if if you tried. What you are repenting of is your self righteousness. And see you're a sodomite. You're justifying it. You are your own God. You are deciding what is good and what is evil. God is the only one who can tell you perfectly what is good and what is evil. So the repenting is of yourself. And if you repent of yourself and come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, and you call upon His name, and He saves you, He seals you. Okay? He will guide you into all truth. God will not allow you to remain in that thing of sodomy. But if you persist in it, and you are actually saved, okay, number one, you're making the Lord look bad. Number two, he will kill you. He will deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. He will. Okay? If you're his, and you're going to be persistent in sin, Denying scripture and you're his, that can happen. He'll kill you. God doesn't want you to remain as a sodomite because he hates sodomy. There's no denying that. But he can rescue you out of that. Here's the thing. Do you want to? You think you you think you're happy, huh? Colossians 2, Colossians 2, verses 8 on to verse 15. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, in vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. The Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's the body. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons. A person, by the way, is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. That's Catholic. That's Satanic. Okay? Let's continue. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, if you are saved. In whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Okay? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what that means. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Flesh is sinful. 
buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being, now pay attention, and you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All trespasses. That's a big all right there. That's a really big all. All trespasses, including sodomy. You don't have to worry about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That's not doctrinally applicable for us today. There is not a sin which our Lord cannot forgive. Stephen Anderson has lied to you. Go figure. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And of course, 1 John chapter 1. Oh, wow. Thank you, Father. 1 John chapter 1. Uh, let's see. Let's read the whole chapter. Again, did this in the last video. But pertinent to what we're talking about. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the capital W Word of Life. Capital W Word of Life, capital W Word, appears seven times in Scripture. Every single one is a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Bible, such as the NIV, have only six. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son Jesus Christ. Stephen Anderson does not have fellowship with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He has fellowship with the Vatican and Satan, the devil himself. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> And even a lost individual can spot that in Stephen Anderson. But see, he, King James Bible William Christian, not helping the cause of that denomination, no. But then again, the fragmentation of the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity speaks for itself. And especially with the adolescent cultic behavior within their comment sections. Uh. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God is not for sodomy. There is no such thing as a practicing sodomite saint. What do you mean by practicing? All oh, the memories you're not going to get rid of. He'll save you, he'll forgive you, absolutely, but the memories will still be there. That doesn't go away. That doesn't go away. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You're a Christian. You're a sodomite Christian. Love is love. You lie. God can forgive you of it, yes, but God does not want you to remain in that. Not at all. You know, oh, I'm a gay Christian. <laughs> you sure are. You sure are. Yeah, you are. But you're claiming to be a saved saint and still in sodomy, the sin of sodomy. Uh, uh, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin except the sin of sodomy. If 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. It's not wrong with being gay, using that terminology. Gay scripturally appears one time, as far as I'm aware of, offhand, I'll be corrected if it's more than one. Um, it doesn't mean same-sex thing. It doesn't, okay? But it's not wrong with being gay. I'm doing nothing wrong. Love is love. Love is love, huh? Yeah. Yeah. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. God does hate sodomy. But God can forgive you and save you and take you out of that sin. Yes, He can. I did for me. He did for other brethren. Okay? There is a life preserver. There is a vessel. There is a boat there to rescue you from that. But do you want it? Hmm? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For these people who go around saying, now you're a Christian, now you got to stop sinning. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. And his word is not in us. I don't sin anymore. Paul missed that memo, by the way. Romans chapter 1 now. Go back to Romans. Now this will be, like I said, there, there's going to be a lot of links in the description box. Okay, If you're not going to watch the whole video, I know that an hour and 16 minutes is quite a long time for a lot of you. But if you have questions, I'm just going to point you to the things that hopefully I'll remember in the description box, okay? There'll be a lot of information for you in there. Uh, we go in great detail about this thing of sodomy, okay? Actually, the whole playlist will be linked in the description box, okay? But Romans chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 27, okay? Because that when they knew God, knew of him mentally, not relationally, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Yes, why? For professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Fool says in his heart there is no God. They know of God, you guys know of God, a God. <laughs> Okay, but you don't know him relationally. And you are your own God, right? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are your own standard for judging, right? You're a fool. You're professing yourself to be wise, making you a fool. You say in their heart there is no God, except you yourself. See? This is why a lot of the easy believers and people, you know the guys who tell you just believe and receive, and you look at them, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, does it? This is why, it's, this kind of stuff is why they avoid this. Because this is, Romans 1, 2, and 3 are all about personal accountability. Which they like to avoid. Okay? And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image, into an image made like to corruptible man. Worshipping men. Worshipping the things of man. Worshipping the creature rather than the creator. We're going to about to read that. Okay, but it starts with man. Okay? I have seen on YouTube uh, one of these shorts, Men Now, where they show these effeminate, emo, they're called boys, dressed up with makeup, looking like girls in dresses, and then they show guys from World War II and guys smoking a cigarette, and blah, 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 whatever. Um, yeah, um masculinity that's one of you know Satan's things you know and then you got a guy like Steven Anderson purporting to be a man but he's actually a sodomite himself tell him I said so okay and change the glory of the of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore now 
stop. They became vain in their imaginations because what? When they knew God, just here, they glorified not God. They made a choice not to do that. They chose. They chose. You have a free will. You have to make the right decision. This is why guys like Steven Anderson, that jerk Scott, that them and the right jerk Scott, like are dangerous because they come to you with a veiled form of Calvinism saying either elect or non-elect. You have no choice. It's decided for you. Stephen Anderson, we saw the evidence. Stephen Anderson said to you, sodomite, that there's no hope for you. You're gone. Even if you wanted to, even if you made, even if you were broken, you couldn't do anything because you've been given over to that. That's Calvinism. And what was his response? Shoot yourself. And a sodomite who is actually broken and emails you like, what was it, 20 times in under an hour because you were in the living room, okay? It's like, but I can't be. Yes, you can. Do you want, do you not want this anymore? Okay, let's talk. You have to make the right decision, okay? Stephen Anderson tells you that once you go down that path that it's impossible for you to come. Now, yes, I did. I told you there is a point where you can go where you will not return. There is a point of no return because you've gone so far. It's never, never because the Lord can't save you or won't save you. But see, it's not at gunpoint. That other jerk tells you that, hey, you're a luck because the Lord does the, has the faith for you. It's, you don't even do that yourself. Our faith is the answer to His grace. Again, a form of Calvinism, veiled, elect and non-elect. It's weird. It's weird. Stephen Anderson is easy believism, but yet he teaches a form, it's called the reprobate doctrine. Doctrine And the reprobate doctrine, exactly what Stephen Anderson teaches, came from Calvinism. What the other guy teaches, that you don't even, it's not even your faith. It's a form of Calvinism, which he never disputed. Okay? Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You made the choice. You don't want to go after the true God. And you know what? For a lot of you people, when you encounter one of these Christians, I don't blame you. Because the God they're offering you is not the God of the Scriptures. And then when you behold their good works and how they, they act with one another, you're like, I don't want anything to do with that. Satan has, Satan has won a battle there. I get it. I understand. I get it. That's why, people, please, do not confuse me at all as a King James Bible-believing Christian. I am a saint who believes in the authorized version. I am a saint who believes in the King James Version. Yes, there's nothing wrong with calling the scriptures, referring to it as the King James Version. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? I don't get off on that. Okay? I don't call this a Bible because even though it says so on the spine, it doesn't say so within the pages of scripture itself. Okay? But I am a saint who believes in the scriptures. Okay? And as a lot of you have noticed already, okay, there's a difference there. There's a difference there. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. God's not angry at you. Love is love. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Worship the creature. Satan was a created being. You are the creature, atheist. You are the creature, sodomite. You are the creature. 
You are not the creator. You are the creature. And what you are doing, again, Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey what God said. Then your eyes shall be open. Meaning you can judge for yourself. Then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And man's judgment is flawed in accurately, rightly knowing what is good and what is evil. That's, that's God's territory. And see, serving the creature yourself, you are your own God. So, when you are your own God, when you are the standard of your own judgment, like I always say to an atheist, you're not, you believe in a God, yourself. You are your own standard. You are your own God. Shut up. Go away from me. Okay? <laughs> I mean, I'll talk to an atheist, of course. I'd rather talk to an atheist than a Christian. But I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. And brethren, like I told, I told a brother yesterday, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't be afraid. Get on them. You, you, you atheist, give me a break. You believe in God yourself. And when you are your own God, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. You think you can judge better than God. If you listen to these atheists, you listen to some of these sodomites, even these gay Christians. Oh, wow. There was one video I saw. It's like, I'm not even going to use that. I'd go off on that kid more than whatever, okay? All right? But see, when you are your own God, God will give you over to that. It's like, that's what you want? You don't want what I say? You want your own? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let all that stuff fall your way. You want to believe in the lie and worship yourself, the creature, rather than me, the creator, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? You make that choice. Not at gunpoint. When you make that choice, he'll let you have it. God's a giving God. He is. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Like the one sodomite woman that I met one day when I was working at the pizza place, she said to me, she knew Leviticus 20.13. It says mankind. It says man. And it says nothing about women. And for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did choose. Uh, for even their women, excuse me, excuse me, did change, change, excuse me, the natural use into that which is against nature. Their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Natural use. Woman was created for man, not man for the woman. Two men with men, that's unnatural. Oh, that, that happens amongst uh, animals all the time. We're not animals. Okay? We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. A monkey doesn't have a soul. Okay? It has a spirit and a body. Your dog Fluffy, your cat Tiger, they have a spirit and a body. They don't have a soul. Okay? Big difference. Big difference. Okay? You're not going to see little Poochie in heaven. You're not going to see Fritz the cat in heaven either. Okay? Your horsey doesn't have a soul. They have a spirit. Spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth. They have a body, obviously. They do not have a soul. So for you to say, well, that happens in nature amongst primates. We're not, prim we're not primates, man. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. They don't, okay? All right? It's against nature. 
and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use for the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense with this sea, now, of their error, which was meat. Sexually transmitted diseases. AIDS. AIDS, which I do believe was created by the Jesuit order. I do believe that. The Lord didn't hinder that at all. Okay, I do believe that AIDS is a man-made uh, bioweapon. I do believe that. I do believe that. But recompense with the C. S is a verb, by the way. One little letter makes a difference. Um, you could get, you can have a get a disease. The clap, but also too memories. And for me, that's the thing that, um, like, every once in a while will plague me. Satan will use, will, you know, it's like, hey, remember that one time? Whisper into my ear, remember that one? It's like, where is that coming from? Like in prayer, speaking to my father, out of nowhere, something like from the past, before I was saved, in that, in that condition. Remember this? It's like, wait, wait, what, what, what? I didn't see it, what? What's going on? God can forgive you. God can rescue you. But remember also, too, that not all the consequences of your actions are taken away. But he can save you and redeem you and free you from that. Absolutely. Absolutely. There isn't a sin that our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, can't forgive. He won't forgive it unless you go to him on his terms. And that's the whole thing. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Gave them over. They did not, as and even as they did not like to, to retain. They made a choice. They didn't want to believe it. Not this Calvinism, elect and non-elect. You have to make a choice. There's a similar uh, portion of Scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Which is doctrine for us today, sir? Anyway. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Meaning they didn't choose. They didn't make the choice, the right choice. We don't save ourselves. But for the love of it, God is not forcing you to make the right or the wrong decision. You have to make that decision. To go, to start. It's like, okay... I don't want this anymore. Okay, I don't believe what these other guys are telling me. I want to know. Lord, show me. I want out of this. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, you wanted it. You chose to go against what God said. This nonsense about, oh, you're born that way. No, you're not. It's a choice. It's a choice. God is not holding a loaded gun to your head. Nor is the devil. You have to make the right choice. Today, there isn't a sin that God cannot forgive. In the future, you take the mark of the beast in your in your hand or in your forehead, you're going to hell. Okay? You're going to hell. Also, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost during the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ is going to be on the uh, throne. You blaspheme. Ah, that's a different story. Because Christ is present. Today, you don't have to worry about that. There isn't a sin that God can't forgive. But here's, here, here's the gist of it. Do you want to be forgiven? 
Haven't you, haven't you had enough of that wretched lifestyle? Or you might be one of these guys like on, uh, on YouTube here, like that disgusting uh, Lucas and Kibo, right? Yeah. 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 Or some of these guys who make it, who give off this aura that they're so happy being against God. God gave them over. They made the choice. They made the choice. Not of coercion. But of free will. And you choose contrary. God will give you what you want. Verses 29 on to verse 32 in Romans chapter 1. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, misery loves company, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Worthy of death. Sodomy is worthy of death. But see, today, the Lord can forgive you and save you and rescue you out of that and make you his and fill you with himself, seal you until the day of redemption, make you a new creature. But see, he's not going to force that upon you. You, you're, you, all you have to do, all you have to do is the answer to his grace is your faith. You can't repent of your sins even if you tried. It's you, you, your own God, professing yourself to be wise, your own God. You became a fool. Fool says in his heart there is no God. You are your own God. That's what you are repenting of. It's simple. But it is difficult. Why? Because of our pride. And also, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 on to 26, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 on to 26, and then we'll be done. Okay? Then we'll be done. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto men, apt to teach, patient. Strive, kind of like Stephen Anderson. Gentle unto all men. That doesn't mean withhold truth. Love is truth. I love you enough to tell you this. If I hated you, I would keep my mouth shut. The gentle uh, that's being referred to is you don't take the entirety of Scripture and then cram it down someone's throat in one sitting. That's what that's a reference unto. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves... I don't want to believe that. You are your worst enemy. You are your own God. You oppose yourself. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, you can't save yourself. You're not a good person. I already covered that. And that they may recover them, themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Look at that verse. And that they may recover themselves. Not save yourself. Recover themselves. You're being told that evil is good and good is evil. Love is love. It doesn't matter. Love is love. The snare of the devil. You're being told that uh, God's given you over. It's impossible for God to save you. It's not true. Today, today, right now, right here, right now, God can save you. God can forgive you. But see, he's not going to force it upon you. That seems to be something that keeps coming up that I am encountering. This veiled Catholicism 
uh, and it's from uh, Catholicism because uh, John Calvin was a uh, was was a uh, Catholic. Okay, <laughs> never left. I don't think. But this veiled Calvinism, where this God who is coercive, who makes the choice for you, who elects people to go to hell and to go to heaven without anything of them. It's like, well, I don't want to go to hell. Yeah, you're, according to Stephen Anderson, you got messed up in the sin of sodomy. You're going to hell no matter what. He, you heard it. You're like, ah, kill yourself. No. no. That's going to be it for this video. There's going to be a lot of links for you in the description box. Any questions, check those out. And remember, too, about Mr. Stephen Anderson, the King James Bible-believing Christian. He even called himself that. Any questions? Go ahead and get, I got emails. Go ahead and get a hold of me. Um, you attack me and send me filth. I, I'm, I'm going to use this OBS and expose you publicly. And hey, bloke, you wicked devil, stop sending me a spam. Okay? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.